All right. Um, for those that don't know, we have our upcoming event, United Washington's Indigenous Peoples Weekend, three days of credible information, not incredible, but credible information, and supreme knowledge. Reserve your space today, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This is June 17th, 18th, and 19th, which is during the time of what they call Juneteenth weekend. You can go to www.drlemelbay.com and go to the events page or um, calendar of events and put forth your information there and reserve your space today. <clears throat> now, this must, must have caught the eye of the fake $5 Indians because two weeks ago, after I posted it, he called. Now, this is the same $5 Indian that been calling for the last two events or so. And he's like, in order to be outside of the $5 Indian brand, you must be federalized and you must be state recognized. This is his position, essentially. And if you're not federalized and you're not state recognized, then you're not indigenous to this land. As we showed you in the last class, the Cherokee chief is 132, 1 over 32, meaning that one in every 32 people in which that you meet have Cherokee blood. He looked European to me. One over 32. Do you remember that class last week, right? So, we looked at that information from a position of, hold up, I have five to six times that amount, if not more, of Native American, Indigenous, Aboriginal blood in me. And yet, I'm not recognized as a Native American. But the thing is, is that you have to understand what has taken place. He called my wife and I culture vultures. And I'm like, oh boy, isn't that the kettle calling the, isn't that the cat calling the kettle black? Because we didn't pay $5 to get on the DOS roll. <laughs> and as we shown before, all of the last names in which that we have is connected uh, I'm talking about my family's last names, is connected on the DOS roll. Whether it's Bright, whether it's Lewis, whether it's Moore, whether it's Coleman, whether it's Francis, all of these last names are heavily populated on the DOS roll, which is supposed to be for those who are federalized and state recognized. Now, because I didn't sign on to, quote unquote, the BIA, does that make me not recognizable? That's what they're saying. Because you have not signed on to the BIA or the DOS role, you know, you have family that's there, you can't easily do so, which I know that I can, and I know that you can, but it isn't necessary. Because remember, Morocco recognized the United States. The United States did not recognize Morocco. And if they did, as Trump said a couple of years ago, 
He said it's only right to recognize Morocco since they recognized us first. Well, he's talking about the kingdom. I'm referring to the empire. Because we know that the kingdom did not exist during that time period. It was the empire that was ruled from here. From out of New York. Why it's called the empire state to this very day. In fact, the seat was in the Bronx. And that is amazing because that is where hip-hop began. From the remnants of those who were once part of the Moroccan Empire, the Moorish Empire. It came out through the genes. Everything comes out through the genes. And it's the truth. I give you prime examples. My wife's mother is from Warren County here in North Carolina. My family, a branch of them, is from Warren County, North Carolina. I did not know that until I took the DNA test. And I got in contact with some of my cousins. And they said, yeah. The Russells, the Mayfields, as in uh, Curtis Mayfield, lived right there and was exclusive to North Carolina. And it was there in Warren County. Another branch was in Robeson County, which was once part of Bladen County. Well, my, my adopted grandmother lived in Bladen County. I grew up in Bladen County. Going back and forth between New York and North Carolina with my, with my adopted mom and with my adopted grandmother. Not knowing that I have 17% Lumbee Native American. My wife, she has in the 20% Lumbee Indian. Now that's deep. Because Robeson County was most part of Bladen County. We had our land in Bladen County. So how is it that the ancestors have taken us between Bladen County and between Warren County, where our ancestors dwelt at, where they already have dwelt at for hundreds of years. That's amazing. The ancestors are always trying to show you and connect you to the land. How did we end up with six acres of land in Bladen County, which was part of, which Robeson County was part of, where the Lumbees are located to this very day? And that is told to us through our DNA. Or another branch of our family is from Warren County. So this was divine. 
it was meant for my wife and I to be together with all these genetic connections and not cousins where that will, is further down the line beyond the seven that is amazing to me So, we have to look at what the ancestors are telling us. In 1993, the United Nations Center for Human Rights recognized the Washington de Dagdemania Mornay, or Empire, as the oldest indigenous group of people on earth. The registered project number is 21593. So, do the United States have to recognize us well if you have a seat at the United Nations which is 215.93 and ours is 24.21 IPO the United States signed on to the United Nations then that means they will have to be aware of the treaties which are on record at the United Nations concerning Washington. So who is saying that they don't recognize who? Because I'm hearing that from the lower courts, the kangaroo courts. That's not coming from the up, the higher up boys, alphabet boys. In fact, when that fool went crazy down there in Baton Rouge back in 2016 Comos a Cosmo shooting up five cops and killing one brother Jackson who just had a newborn baby and he was a brother and the crazy part is that he was Washington What happened was on the news, Don Lemon, there was a FBI negotiator, advisor. I can't remember his name right now. However, Don Lemon asked him about him being affiliated with the Washington. And he looked at him like, um, the Watchtower are a loving people. This is what he said on Worldwide News in CNN. said the Watchtower are a loving people. They wouldn't have done this. So then Don, let me try to associate it. He said, well, with his affiliation with the Watchtower, um, and all the other um, political um, groups that he's been affiliated with, um, that could have been a um, a a, um, a uh, basically a conglomerate in which that could have set him off. But the FBI agent had to make it clear and plain that the Watchtower didn't do this. The Watchtower. Um, or loving people. And plus, why would Don Lemon do that when it was real simple that Cosmo specifically came out and did videos and stated that he was not affiliated with any particular group whatsoever and whatever he's getting ready to do was on his own accord. But they tried to put it on the Washington, i.e. United Washington. And we didn't jump. We didn't we didn't even respond. Cause the FBI already knew. 
that we had nothing to do with it. But this was during Obama's administration, and obviously they was upset with the fact that we revealed, along with another group, revealed that Barack Obama and Michelle did away with their license as lawyers and joined the Empire Washington back in 1997. When he began to start running for the Senate, they had to um, confiscate the computers and all that information, and that happened in 2000. See, this is stuff in which that they don't want us to know as if we can't put the pieces of the puzzle together. These Native Americans, tribes of Moors, Washita, Yamasi, Iroquois, Cherokee, Choctaw, Blackfoot, Piqua, and Mohican, as well as many others. In 1866, during the Civil War, the last leader of the Cherokee Nation was a Muslim named Ramadan Ibn Wati. Now, you can look at his picture, his hair, his nose, lips. Yes, he has high cheekbones, but the nose, the lips, and particularly the hair under the turban shows and demonstrates that he is a Moor. He was a Moor. So, this is a contradiction to the 132 fake $5 Indian that we showed last week to this is being one of the Civil War's last leaders of the Cherokee Nation, who was a Muslim, Muslim, with the name Ramadan Ibn Wati. So as you see here, obviously an illustration of a so-called black man, a Moor, a black or Moor, as compared to the 132 fake $5 Indian that we showed before. And if you was not here for that class, I um, come from El Bay. Hey, how to watch the age? How to watch the age? It's probably be so late, brother. That's all right. We will have to show you because it is important for us to have an understanding of what is really going on in the theft of your inheritance. Not just in Africa as they posing Europeans to be Egyptians or they posing in the land of Canaan, which is Levant, as being Jewish or Jews posing to uh, uh, Jewish or So here, this is the chief of the Cherokee Nation, at least it was, his name is Bill John Baker, born in Cherokee County, Oklahoma, where his family has been for four generations. Where was they at before the four generations? Oh, I know where they were. Ireland. Of mixed ethnicity. In I, Ireland. Yeah, he was in Ireland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but here, talking about that pale, that pale man? Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about yeah, one and the same. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So of mixed ethnicity, like many Cherokee citizens, he is one over 32, which is only 3.1%. That's it. And he's the chief. 
as I spoke about last week. Well, I had 17% just lumpy alone. That's not talking about the Mexican, the Miss Lock. That's not talking about the Cherokee. That's not talking about the Choctaw. That's not talking about any of the other native indigenous tribes in which that is in my bloodline. Just one of my bloodlines. Just one. Lumby, 17%, crushes this, 3.1%. Wow. But yet we're not indigenous from this land, but yet he's the freaking chief of the Cherokee with only 3.1%? <laughs> oh boy You know that's false Yeah Here goes some more Chiefs Look at them But yet You can't be a chief Because You don't look Native American to me But yet We got more Native American blood Than they do and they're chiefs. And we're not even part of a goddamn tribe that's federally recognized or state recognized. Which is fine. We don't have to be. This is the reason why the Empress never wanted us to be federalized and state recognized. It wasn't necessary. Since we are the ones who recognize them as the Moorish Empire. The remnants of the Moorish Empire recognized the United States. It's the United States of America. America is not of the United States. One has a higher position, a more superior position, and that is the Moorish Empire. And this is what we push. Myself and Chief Arisha was talking about maybe an hour and a half, two hours ago, and he brought up a topic about the Moors and the White Gold Book, which I showed in class before, things by Michael Hoffman, in which that talked about specifically how the Moors treated the Europeans when we had them enslaved. Chief of Research, you want to tell the group what happened? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we got you. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I'm still laughing at that, but <laughs> it's not funny. But yeah, it says when we had them in captive, uh, we would work them so hard to where they barely had a chance to eat bread. And then we would whoop them so bad to where if they complained, we would whoop them again to get them new scars to get to get over from having old scars that they were complaining about. Damn. Say that one more time. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it said that when they complained about their scars and, and the hard work that they had to do, we would whoop them again so they could forget about their old scars and give them new scars. Mm. Yeah, true. Cool. But what what did that mean to you, God, when you when you read that? Man, that mean that it, it, it shit, it, like just it mean not that, him. That <laughs> yeah, go yeah. Ahead, go ahead. When we had him a slave, right? Yeah, I yeah, it mean that. No, yeah. scars you talking about scars from us. <laughs> But now you realize why they had to switch up history. They say that they brought all of us here in order to give us the mind state, the mental state of inferiority. Well, Sister earlier said that's a lie. Uh, what's her name? Dr. Mumbi Saraki? Mm -hmm. Kenya. She said that uh, a lot of y'all coming over to Ghana and everything, but the, the truth of the matter is, 
you all are the true Native Americans over there. Mm-hmm. Not Africans. Say, we're not Africans. That, that was the day. He said, we're not Africans. She said, I'm, I'm, I ain't again got nothing against you. You know, you know, you're welcome to come over here if you like, you know. But uh, <coughs> a lot of people from America wrote me and told me, and uh, they're not coming over here. They're going to build on their own country over there, and they're Americans. And I said, wow. <laughs> you know, the sister says, you just wanted to share that with us. Said, uh, no, a lot of y'all not from here. Sure did. And this would explain on the reason why Ramadan Ibn Wachi is a so-called Negro. A Moor. Who's fighting during the Civil War. Who's there during the Civil War? Why the check he don't tell you about this? And guess what, Alicia? Uh, we both talked to all this. Uh, uh, I found out that we were, uh, that our ancestors, uh, then a lot of our ancestors fought on the side of the Confederacy. Right. Yep. A lot of people that they be be like, huh? Oh, yeah. This is uh, James Cooper. Greetings, Brother James. How you doing? All right. So, as you see on this map, you see the largest tribe is Cherokee. The largest tribe is Cherokee. Through right. here, as we say, Maryland, Delaware, which are the places of the Lenape, meaning that the Lenape and them are also Cherokee, which would be the Omex. You see down into South Carolina, Tennessee, West Virginia, Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. Excuse me. Uh, uh, Missouri, Kansas, Texas. These are the areas in which that shows the Cherokee connection. But they have gone under many different other names or titles. We know that the Muscogee, who are the Creek, the Seminoles, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw, and the Cherokee, or the so-called five civilized tribes. These so-called five civilized tribes in treaty consist of the largest branch of Native Americans, Moors. This is before the 1900s, of course, because as we've seen, by the time we get into the 1900s, what they did, and I can tell you this personally, because I was told this by my sociologist professor in college, that the sociologists around the time of the 1900s was trying to put the Chinese people in a category, and the category that they chose was Native American. Now, that makes sense, because some of the Native Americans that came down after 8,300 years ago 
from the Bering Strait. And you have the Inuit, the Eskimos, and they came down into the interior of Washington State, down into Oregon, down into the middle portions, become the Plain Indians, as they're called. Then you had those who came from China on ships that arrived around four, um, 1479 A.D. to Mexico and mixed with the Omex there to produce what we now call the Mayans. population. When you go to any of these particular places and you look at the features, you will find that they're oriental. Unless you come to the south along the eastern seaboard and then along the northern board and then into California, you will find darker features as those from California will have more features of the Pacific people, those who came from the islands of the Pacific, Australia as the Aborigines, Tonka, Hawaii, all these various islands had dark skinned people. Papua New Guinea, etc., etc. And they came into the West Coast and mixed in with those in which that were the so called Orientals, Asians. Then you had those in which that was from what we refer to as Africa. It also has ships and been doing import and export with each other for over 10,000 years. It's far back, some say 100,000 years, according to certain books. Books written specifically by Paul Barton. You can get his books, Susu Economics. One in particular. Which he states in there that so called Moors here in America and the Moors in Africa have been doing import and export with each other for over 100,000 years. Now that is. 94,000 years before the European came on the planet. Because he only been here, according to his own scientists, 6,000 years, 600 years, 6,600 years to 8,000 years. So we're talking about 92 to 94,000 years before he even came on the planet. We was already doing import and export with each other. This is why we find corn in Africa. This is why they find cocaine in Africa. This is why they find peanuts, googers, in Africa. In Africa. Those were all plants from America. All plants from America. America. Someone need to mute their background. There's a um, echo. So here, how different would be the species of a philosophical?
away. So how different would be the sensation of a philosophic mind to reflect the essence of exterminating a part of the human race by mode, by our mode of population that we had preserved through all difficulties and at last has imparted our knowledge of cultivation or cultivating and the arts and the aboriginals of the country by which the source of freedom, life, and happiness has been preserved and extended. But it has been conceived to, to be impracticable to civilize the Indians of North America. This opinion is probably more convenient than just. This is Henry Knox, notes to George Washington. The five civilized tribes were a group of Native American nations that was officially and unofficially called such as the collective designated the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw Creek, and Seminole tribes. The term was applied by Anglo-European settlers during the colonial and early federal period because the tribes had adopted many of the colonialist um, customs and generally had good relations with white settlers. Yeah, and this is how we get the five dollar Indians that's infiltrated into these five tribes. And you being ostracized, saying that you just came from Africa. That was the plan. To steal your land. And all I can say is damn. Right, so these five tribes differ from most others in fact that their land was held not on the same basis as reservations, but by patterns or deeds. With certain restrictions as to alienation and revisionists or reversions, as well as other restrictions regarding timber, mining, and grazing within the respective tracks tracks. All of the five civilized tribes lived in the Southeastern United States before the government forced their relocation under the Indian Removal Act into other parts of the county or country, especially the future state of Oklahoma. This act, signed into law by President Andrew Jackson in May 1830, required that all Native American tribes living east of the Mississippi River relocate to lands west of the river. So, the Washoe was where a Negroid tribe living above the New Orleans Bayou. It has been said that the Washoe mixed in with the Malian Moors and produced the Yamasee. Produced the Yamasee. So the Yamasee are called the mothers and fathers of the Native American tribes. But they didn't get produced until they mixed in with the Malian Moors in the Washo or the Washito. Omex. The Omex. Right? This is Brother D. D'Angelo's on page from JP. It says, if the people you mention are from the land, that's more. If the people are from light beings, that's more. If they are from the sacred DNA, they are more. From Murray, the blood, the root of the word blood. If those, if those people are descendants of the roof, the Moabites, whose blood flows in the veins of the Savior of the world, they are Moors. Etc. Etc. Hey, Arlene. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Somalian Empire, the Shanghai Empire, you still got a connection to Northwest Africa, though. Yeah. Yeah. Still got. A, I mean, you know, I know what everybody's saying, you know, but you still got a connection. Mm-hmm. You know? So you know, even the Moorish connection, you know, the, 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 the more, you know, up mm-hmm. more. 
mean, uh, I think that's where really the payments and the fast issues really originated from. I mean, you know, I, I, I think so. I mean, about, about maybe about a hundred, hundreds of thousands of years ago. The way. You know, if you look at the Phoenicians, uh, the sculptures are being worn in service, you know. Uh, and that was long before there was such thing as a, uh, what you call about, such a thing as a common they call Europe. Right. So, you know, so, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave myself back out. Okay, brother Al. So, see, only that makes sense because of the fact is, is that the emperor's already told us that 85% of our ancestry was already here prior to the 400 years of the slave trade or the transatlantic slave trade in which that supposedly have happened, and only 15% of our ancestry was brought here by the Europeans. That's it. And that wasn't particularly just from Africa. Because they was doing the um, triangle trade during that time period. We would go to North America, South America, and the adjoining islands. And then bring people back from those areas. Why would you keep going 3,000 miles across the water? For a three to four month voyage. Just doesn't make any sense. We can then do the same thing in which that these um, carnival and these Royal Caribbean um, ships do to this day. Go from North America down to South America to the adjoining islands and then back to North America. Picking up people. Dr. Lee. Yes. So I think I mentioned this before, but I found out that in 1801, um, Saxons, which is um, a people name, they came from the Americas as well, over here. I think it's true that. But the reason they went there is because they, they fought for the, uh, for the British at the time, and they were given slavery. So they took out the Trinidad and gave them and they, fought, and they fought with the British because the British at that time was the British Moors. Okay, okay. There was Nubian, there was black people. Moors, black or Moors. Wow, okay. That's true. So he came uh, with... I mean, uh, we, we can't bring that in school. Uh, sorry. <laughs> No, you go ahead, brother. I was just joking. Yeah. No, I'm I'm done. That's it. Peace. Okay. Well, go ahead, brother. Um, L. No, I was I was I was, I was just messing around, fooling around. I said, no, I mean, you can't. We can't teach that in the in the curriculum. Curriculum in our schools across the country. You can't teach them that. What you said about the uh uh, uh the British Moors. But there were more, there were so-called black people. Right. So we, can't, we can't teach that in, in the school. They, they, they can't have that in the correct way. Well, I always thought during the Civil War, why did we have so-called black people fighting on the side of the South and black people fighting on the side of the North? Sure did. Why, why, why would we be fighting for Europeans? That didn't make sense. Right, never made sense. But then we come to find out. But hold up. That's the British, British Moors fighting other Moors. <laughs> That's what it was. And the Albion was just there even during the Revolutionary War. The Albion, I mean, the Albion was there, but you know. Right. But you know, like, uh, uh, King George the Third, you know, he was a Moor. So, um, but, but they keep saying he was European. Pale, they keep, of course, of course, that they're gonna do that, you know. But uh, <clears throat> you know, they're gonna have him as a pale uh, skin person. But you got uh, the Queen Charlotte, you know. I was gonna try to say Queen Charlotte wasn't the one 
or one of my native women, you know, so. Uh, but anything, you know, I just want to uh, let the truth out. Right. It's not as well because it's, it's overwhelming out here. Right? Mm -hmm. It's overwhelming out here. There's so much information on that, what you're just speaking right now, today, you know. So right. Not, like, they can't keep up and getting out. Right. They might as well just hang that up. So anyway, I'm gonna mute myself back out. Okay. Hey, Dr. Aline. Yes. You know, another thing we can look at is the Ellis Island thing. If you just study Ellis Island, you'll see that the majority of them were very, very poor, and that's who was coming in here. You can't tell me that you were already here if you've already admitted in history that you got here via Ellis Island. If you look up every European nationality online, it'll tell you the date that they got here if it was after their slavery here. Exactly. So how could they have brought us here? <laughs> When they just get here themselves. So Yamasee is the mother tribe of the Creek, Seminoles, Appalachians, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Catawba, Cherokee, as well as many other tribes. In the 1700s, the British, French, and Spanish mixed in many of, into many of these tribes. Okay. In 1715, the Yamasee rose in rebellion against the English and allied with the Spaniards. Why? Because the Spaniards were darker. The French were darker. The British were the brutish Moors. They was darker. We know that the Yamasee are a dark-skinned tribe. Negroid, as they would say. Some of the Yamasee Creeks migrated to what is now known as Savannah, Georgia. In fact, if you go down, travel down 95 towards Savannah, Georgia, you will find, before you get to Savannah, Georgia, in South Carolina, Yamasee, the town called Yamasee. It became outlaws under the tribal name of Yamacraw. When the British began taking women and children into slavery, many black Native American men mixed in with runaway African slaves. So now, because of that, all of y'all are all of y'all are African slaves. But hold up. You still forgetting about all of this DNA percentage here. You definitely got more than the chief. <laughs> And that's just one tribe. A war broke out between the Yamasee and the British in 1715, the Yamasee Uprising. Throughout the 1700s, many tribes were slaughtered. This is where they say that the Yamasees became extinct. For real? How did that happen? When we, when we were still fighting way up until the 1800s. In fact, all the way up to 1858. <laughs> so when did the Yamasees, this, this is what this fake $5 Indian tried to tell me two weeks ago. Two, three weeks ago, he tried to tell me that the Yamasees went extinct. I said, when? What year? You can't answer it. I said, yeah, that's what I thought. Because you were still fighting until 1858. Obviously, you don't read. Stop going by what your elders say because they're getting the right 
revisionist history, his story. Throughout the 1700s, many tribes were slaughtered. Remnants of these tribes band together to create an alliance. Therefore, formed new uh, formed tribes of Yamasi, Kosa, Chohan, and Congaree was known as the Catabas. The Catabas spoke a dialect of the ancient um, Kushite language, which was bits and pieces of the original Olmec African language. The Catawba lives in South Carolina. So, we know that the Yamasee, the Gullah Geechee, and the Seminole was all the same people. So here it is. You have the Yamasee and the Gullah Geechee Wars, the unconquered. They never was conquered. So how could they have gone extinct if they was never conquered? So what is this illusion that the Yamasees mysteriously disappeared? No, what it was is that you took away our culture, our heritage, our customs, our traditions. Florida Negro War, Black Seminoles and the Second Seminole War. Dixon. History of the Second Seminole War, 1835-1842. Mahan. History of the Third Seminole War, 1849-1858. So we're talking about from 1715 to 1858, we fought. As I talked about this before. So here, Black Seminoles. You mentioned earlier that the tribe called Washington Moore was this a Native American tribe and where are they now the Washington were direct descendants of the Omex who mixed in with the Malian Moors the name Washington comes from the Washington River which flows along northwest Texas and Oklahoma in the red to the Red River where the Cayenne Native Americans live in the Kawashpa Kawahasha, meaning raccoon people. Now, if you've seen Studio 666, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. They're using a raccoon as a sacrifice. That raccoon is actually talking about us as the Washita, the raccoon people. We would take black <coughs> carbon. Smut, and we would put it around our eyes, and this is how we got called the raccoon people, Kawasha, the Kawasha people or the Washita people. This is why up until the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, they still refer to us as coons. Why would white people refer to Negroes as coons if we were not the raccoon people? Because they know our history. Exactly. History. Exactly. History. Exactly. Why would they call us coons? Know who we are. As if that's supposed to be a derogatory term. And it is. Because we don't know our history. We didn't, we didn't know that we was the raccoon people, that we was the people who, hold on, let, let me show you. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's see.
Can everyone see the screen? Yes. All right. We put war paint around the eyes. Same thing they do even today in football, as you see here. They just didn't put it all around the eyes like we used to. This is a said Native American here, and she has the same markings as you see here of the raccoon, except hers is red. We used to use black. So here's the reason why we look just like the raccoon, as you see here on the right. Everybody understand? Everybody get what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Yes, yeah. All right, so... The Washer was a tribe of Negroes, or Negroes, that lived above the New Orleans Bayou and were of the Tunica linguistic stock. The name Washita is derivative of the term Washita and is what is now called Wichita. The term is a Choctaw term, which means Big Harbor, which represents the grass thatched arbor houses or homes that the people lived in. The Washita was originally from Lower Mississippi, actually before that from Mexico, because it was, as we said, they said it was the Omex. The Omex came from Mex was in Mexico. So then he came up into the interior of, of Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, which was named after Alibaba. The tribe was officially named Wichita by the United States government in the Camp Holmes Treaties of 1835. So if they claim that Wichita is not recognized, then you just say, well, you might call them Wichita then. This tribe was unmistakably a Negro tribe. The Wichita was also known as the Pinawasha, or by the French, the Pahousa, which means Black Pawnee. French traders from Illinois called them the Pawnee Piqua which means tattoo pony. Why are they calling the tattoo pony? These are the tattoos. The Rochester or raccoon people were called raccoon because of their black faces. When described the rac on Rochester, the first described the blacks who lived in the large Grass houses. The Washita called themselves Kikichis, which is an interpretation of raccoon eyed. Raccoon eyed. Mm -hmm. The term was later shortened to coon, which became a term used in reference to blacks in America. And uh, as I stated before, there's no other people, even the so-called Native Americans aren't called coons. <coughs> are they? Oh. Only the so-called blacks in America were called coons. So they could be called, the, so, so the Albions aren't the raccoon people. <laughs> the Washita was an offshoot of the Pawnee Confederation when the Moors came to America. They mixed in with the Washita Native Americans and became known as the Washo. Now check this out. So the Washita Moors are the so-called lost tribes of Indians that were spoken of in the history books. Yes. They are the hidden tribes that were the descendants of the Olmecs and Toltecs of Mexico. The Washita tribe also are also the ancestors of such tribes as the Pawnee, Osage, Creek, Seminole, Cherokee, Catawba, Comanche, Nice Pierce, Tuscarora, Jeniskin, Manapani, Powhatan, Micmac, and what's that? Lumbee. 
So, I got 17% Lumby, which proves that I am Washita. Once again, that's just one of the tribes out of many that I found of indigenous aboriginal heritage here in the Americas. This Mount North, South, Central, and the adjoining islands. Mandan, Blackfoot, which is Tar Heel, as in the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. Natchez, Chickasaw, and many more tribes. So the Lumbees are Washita. The Powhatan are Washita. The Blackfoot are Washita. The Osage, the Creek, the Seminole, the Cherokee are Washita. The Comanche, the Tuscarora, the Mattapani, Washita. And they know this. I met with the southern chief of the Cherokee last year. When he seen our documentation, he said he could retire. Why did he tell me that? Why would he retire? And shit, we just came on the scene, to his knowledge. Even though we've been doing this for over 30 years. And the Empress, 30 years before me. He said that because we now have the truth about our ancestry being Washita or Wichita. And how all these tribes were Washita, Wichita. And why they have the name Wichita, Kansas. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that Wichita, Kansas, that's the, Wichita is the capital. Could be mistaken. So, when he said that the Yamases, the five, the fake five dollar Indian, that is, who signed his way. His ancestry, uh, ancestors signed their way onto the Dulles Roll. But he can't explain none of this information that is in all these books that I'm showing you. That's the amazing part of this. Just call me talking and yapping. I need proof. Give me a book so I can go and read and study and research myself. Similar wars, America's longest Indian conflict. Michelle, saw the Similar Wars, 1817 to 1858. <laughs> but once again, this is still 100 years after. It started in 1715 with the Yamases. Once again, the Yamases, the Gullah Geechee, and the Seminole, same people. The Civil War is 18, um, 18 to 18, um, to 1858. Hook. So the Civil Wars Heritage Trail. This is a statement coming from Brigadier General Sidney Jessup. 
1837, in the American State Papers, Military Affairs, cited in Kenneth Porter, The Negro on the American Frontier. The Negro on the American Frontier. This, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian war. This is the reason why you find who's here on the cover of the Seminole Wars of 1818 to 1858. Who's on the cover? You see the Seminole, the Pale Seminole. You see the dark Mongolian type of features of Seminole. Then you find the Negro. Okay. So he said this. This, you may be assured, is a Negro, not an Indian war. And if it be not speedily put down, the South will feel the effects of it on their slave population before the end of the next season. So there were slaves, so-called black slaves. However, there was also free Negroes, which they say was not an Indian war, even though the Negroes were seen as Indians. <laughs> If they feel the effects of it on the slave population before the end of the next season, if the war be carried on, it must necessarily be one of extermination. We have in no former period of our history had to contend with so formidable an enemy. No seminar proves false to his country, nor has a single instance ever occurred of a first-rate warrior having surrendered. So, if the Seminoles were simply means runaway, there was not an actual tribe, there are remnants of the Yamasee and the Gullah Geechee people. Let's get that correct. So, how did they go extinct? They changed the name. <laughs> You see that? Because the word Yamasi is Hebrew, which means O Messiahs. <laughs> o Saviors. Through all my operations, I found the Negroes to most active and determined warriors. And during the conferences with the Indian chiefs, I ascertained they exercised an almost controlling influence over them. The Negroes ruled the Indians. Wow. The Negroes ruled the Indians? Well, that's a twist. Because they said that the Indians had us, the so-called five um, tribes, had us as slaves. You see the contradictions in their history? Yeah. Seminole Indian chiefs described as Negroes. Just what I was just talking about. Indian chiefs? Oh yeah, described as Negroes. Not not the fake five dollar Indian. A one over thirty two or three point 1% Cherokee blood. <laughs> Commissioned in 1820, but no American official explained how it happened. If the Negroes were but chattels of the Indians, in other words, slaves of the Indians, then how did so many Seminole chiefs were black? See, they couldn't explain it then. They can't explain the shit now. <laughs> because the Seminoles are the Yamasee. 
I'll show you that in a minute. See, this is how the lies keep being perpetrated. The principal Seminole chief ruled over the entire nation in 1820 was Nemophilo, who bore no evidence of Indian admixture. Wow. He's a straight Negro. Another great chieftain was Mechanopal, king over kings, described as part Negro and very dark, who ruled the nations in 1832, and owned immense, immense herds of cattle and ponies. He had Billy Bowlegs, or Bolick. His nephew, who led the last hostility against the United States in 1855 to 1858, was also part Negro. Louis Pacheco, a pure blood <laughs> Negro. <coughs> Excuse me. A pure blood Negro who planned dates as in Miami Day. Massacre, and afterwards became a Seminole sub-chief, could read, write, and speak English, French, Spanish, and Creek. Having been the slave of a coached Spaniard planter near Tampa Bay. The most important, if not the best known of the Seminole chiefs, was a pure, pure bloody, a pure blood Negro named Abraham, who became, who because of his intelligence and knowledge of English, negotiated. Nearly all of the treaties with the United States commissioners. Of him, General Jessup, who we just talked about now, said a good soldier and an intrepid leader. He was a chief and the most cunning and intelligent Negro we have. So see, this is when Jessup was, was having to tell the truth. And you see, Jessup was telling a whole lot of truths. Oh, these, was, these ain't Indians, these Negroes. And they kicking our ass. And they kicking our ass. Shit, they, that's all I can tell you. They kicking our ass. You better get this shit. You better get this shit on the way, goddamn. You better get this shit. Help. 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 <laughs> During the 19th century, a Seminole story had related to some of the Yamasee men were killed in battle. And the Seminole men married the Yamasee women. This is Pensacola Gazette, October the 9th, 1824. However, a seminar appeared darker than his fellows. It was said that his Yamasee ancestry was shown. Wow. So this is, this, this is me showing you that the Yamasee were the Seminole. One of the same people. The Gullah Beachy. So we took them out from South Carolina down to Georgia into damn Florida. You fight, we, was fighting, we was fighting them. From 1715 y'all, to 1858. We were not playing. So whatever they say, uh, 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 they keep talking about Nat Turner with that fair rebellion. Um, Denmark Vesey or uh, Gabriel Prosser with their fell ass uh, 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 rebellions. Bring up the ones that succeeded. That we won, that we whipped their ass for shit. You talking about from 1715, somebody calculate 1715, um, um, 1858, um, 1715. How long is that? 143 years. Exactly. Thank you. So nearly 150 years we worked as. And notice this was during the time of Andrew Jackson claiming that he sent off the so-called uh, Native Americans, Cherokee in particular, from out of the states of North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, 1830. Obviously, everybody didn't leave. And this is why we were still fighting. We were like, we're not letting go of our land, yo.
Yemisi men were killed in battle, and the Seminole men married the Yemisi women. So now you got part Seminole and Yamasi. But they yet understand that the Seminole was dark themselves. That's alone the fact of the Yamasees, who was also dark. This is from the Florida Anthropologist, volume 23-24. Whenever a Seminole appears to be darker than his fellows, it is said that his Yamasi ancestry was shown. But God damn it, let my, let my Yamasee ancestry show. There it is. They got them showing. They got their turtles on and their feathers on. Looking ass. This one here must be a KKK member or something because he got his damn head chopped off. <clears throat> this is how the Seminoles and the Yamasees looked. Family members. Seminole Indians, descendants of Georgia, South Carolina, Muscogee Creek tribes. Look at Seminole Chief, Caesar Brunier. We got the Seminole Indian and Papoose. Now you know where Papoose got his name from. Miami, Florida. I know sisters who look like that today. I know brothers who look like Caesar Brunner today. The Seminole. Pompey Factor, son of Chief Hardy Factor. See, the Seminoles was dark also. Our families own all of America with their pre-black, pre-colonial Aboriginal nations identity until the United States Corporation stripped our grandparents of their true self-governance and land titles by reclassifying our grandparents from Indians to legal fictions, landless, meaningless, black, Negro, mulatto, colored, African-American, or census records. It doesn't make good sense, does it, to do a damn census record? <clears throat> For the millions of so-called blacks that call themselves Moors today, why that shit hasn't changed yet, and why on the census documents they don't have the title or don't have a space for more? This is Brother Paul Barton. I lay salam upon him. This is from his book, The History of the African Omex, Black Civilizations, of America from prehistoric times to the present era. In the book it says this, among the other black nations that existed in America before Columbus and long before Christ were the Yamasi Indians, who had a large kingdom in the southeast United States. Their descendants were among the first blacks of pre-Columbian American origin to fall victim to kidnapping for the purpose of enslavement. The descendants of the Yamases are the millions of blacks who live in Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and North, Northern Florida. So how the hell did they become extinct? When we are them, 
Yamasi. I'm a Yamasi. I'm a Yamasi. I'm a Yamasi. I'm also Washita. I'm also Wumbi. I'm also Miwok. I'm also Peruvian. This is all the indigenous blood and more. <coughs> this is the last slide. Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line by Scott Withrow writes, the Yamasee Indians are Yamasee, also referred to them as the Amargarican or the Amargaris or the Medicacario were listed among the 19 tribes as being of dark complexion. 19 tribes. 19 tribes. See, we be thinking of just one tribe. Oh, the Yamasee, yes, they was very dark skinned. But they are extinct now. <laughs> 19 tribes of being dark complexion found widely scattered among the inhabitants of North and Central America. They are soon to be immigrants from Africa. That, that was assumed. Because that's not true. There was Omex. And it was in America for hundreds of thousands of years. Way before the Europeans, who can claim to be the, a goddamn American, because he just came from uh, 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 um, Ireland or Scotland or whatever the case is. Prior to the European discovery of America, who Lucas Verez or Vesquez de um, Elio persisted in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina. Now who, uh, hold up, if the Yamasee is in Beaufort, South Carolina, do you understand that Beaufort, South Carolina is the home of the Gullah Geechee people? Go to Beaufort, South Carolina today, right now. So they was there in 1520. You can go there now, 2020, or in particular, 2022. they still there. They're called the Gullah Geechee people. So the Gullah Geechee people are the Yamasee. Earlier, refers to the Yamasee Negroes as being invariable laborers. And that's all we are to them today. They want our inventions, so you get the job, you give us all your ideas, we take them, prosper, become billionaires, and you get crumbs. You become a thousandaire, never a millionaire from your own inventions, but they make and become tr billionaires off of your shit. And if we say, well, that's not necessarily true, that's, that's not true, if that, that, didn't ha that doesn't happen, then, hmm, does it? Well, let's, let's, let's look at that right quick. Let's look at that right quick. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at that. Because these are so-called black inventors and their inventions. How much money do you think the family of Jones, Frederick and Jones, is making off the air conditioning unit? What you put inside your windows that runs? Because he, he made that. How much you think he make made off of that? Charles Drew, how much you think he made off the blood plasma bag? Where they have plasma banks all over the goddamn cities throughout the United States. How much you think his family made off of that? The Drew family. Hmm? Nothing. Exactly. What about the um Henry T. Well, Sampson? Billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. Right. Uh, Henry T. Sampson, he did a cellular um, car phone. How much do you think the Sampson family is getting off of that shit? 
What about Alexander Miles? Who did the elevator? The elevator is all over the world. Why isn't his family, the Miles family, billionaires? Or Louis Lattimore, for that example. The electric lamp, the light bulb. He did that. Not no goddamn... This motherfucker here called Edison. And by the way, this is supposed to be the real Nikola Tesla. Hmm. Nikola Tesla? Allegedly. The real version. Oh, wow. Uh, so oh, you talking about that more, Nikola Tesla? Oh. No one makes sense. Yeah, this is allegedly Nikola Tesla. Wow. <laughs> what about TJ Marshall? You think the Marshall family is making money from the fire extinguisher? Which is in every business at home today? Mm-hmm. What about Lydia Newman, the hairbrush? You think all them got, you think them got their careers and gave the Newman family some money? Nope. But you go to the goddamn hair shop, hair brushes is all in there, isn't it? <laughs> what about J.A. Burr, the lawnmower? It's about that time again, cut that damn grass. You think the Burr family got billions and billions of dollars? What about Thomas Stewart, the mop? Something simple as that, the mop. Everybody got one in their home. So if you're talking about 300 million people who get mops in their homes. One, two, three. The Stewart family, did they make the money off of that? What about Carter G. Wilson with this peanut butter? He don't even have his own damn name brand Carver, uh, um, um, George, excuse me, um, George Washington Carver peanut butter. Do y'all see that peanut butter in the stores? I see Jeff. I see Peter Pan. Ain't nobody done, done that. You think the Carver family getting that money? What about Jay Standard? The freaking refrigerator. The refrigerator. Everybody got that. 300 million people in the United States got the refrigerator. 7 billion people in the world. Refrigerator costs 1500 goddamn dollars. Times 7 billion people on the fucking planet. You think the Stanley family got that money? <laughs> That's my point. That's my Riley. point. Yes. I found that page uh, in white in white gold. It's on page 105. Okay, what you got? Yeah, it says, uh, and I highlighted it the wrong way. It says the black slave drivers were extremely cruel to the men under their charge. They immediately punished them, punished the least stop or uh, punished the least stop or inadvertency of rope Thomas pillow and often will allow the poor creatures time to eat their bread. The drivers worked them in ships and at the end of each ship would tell their replacement which of the slaves had been slack in their, uh, in their work. The new driver would then raise his cudgel and beat the hapless slave which he always took care to bestow on the parts where he thought they would be most hurt. Well, she said that the most of the slave drivers would strike at the head, and when he had broke it, counterfeited with a charitable surgeon, applying some uh, unslacking lines and stinks, and stinks the bleeding. 
If any slave was beaten so badly that he was no longer able to work, the slave driver had his wealthy way of enabling him by redoubling or redoubling the strikes so that the new one made him forget the old. Mm. Right. Just like you say. And then every time I see that, that <laughs> I, I hate to laugh, man. Damn. It's like saying, you don't be quiet, I'm going to beat you again, Harpo. Right. I mean, yes. What, what, what's going to lead you why they, they, did, they didn't get their hair? Say it again. Yeah. They, they, didn't, they didn't get their money that they're supposed to get from, from their... Uh, the, family, the, family, the family's number one they're going to know, does not know how to go about school in order to recoup money for um, these inventions. And because um, these corporations have taken over a lot of these inventions, these families... Um, can't and will not receive funding or monies from these inventions in which that obviously was stolen because everybody got to got their refrigerator. If not one, two, three, four, five o'clock, you know, it should be, I mean, hell, I got them two refrigerators in the house. I got in the store. A lot of money. Yeah. This is where class action suits come in at. Oh, okay. Hmm. Assuming okay. for the violations okay. of theft of intellectual property on behalf of the families. And if you go and check your bloodline, I bet you got some of these family lineages in your bloodline. Meaning that you're the heir, meaning that you can damn get at them. This is the purpose of DNA. Take it to the next level. Not just keep reading this shit on the chart. But now take this into proving who you are in order to receive monies and recoup monies back. from these corporations. Mm -hmm. This is what happened with Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran was getting ready to do the same thing. He was getting ready to sue for reparations from the corporations and from these schools, these universities, these railroads, and etc. Then all of a sudden he comes up with a, um, a, a um, hemogen, a brain hemogen. Yeah. And he dies, and then all of a sudden, um, you hear nothing again about this reparation with all these people that he was working on it with. He was working on it with some of the big time lawyers that have won money from other corporations. But after he died, everything fell apart. You knew nothing about the shit. Mm -hmm. So John Cochran was just ready to do a all-out reparation case against the universities, schools, universities like Brown University, Harvard University, Yale University, Princeton University, Oxford University. He was just ready to sue all of them for slavery for billions of dollars. Yeah, he's going to sue 
and insurance companies. Yeah, that's why he did. That profited off of our, off of slavery. He's been ready to sue all of these companies. Yeah, class action suit. Class yeah. action suit. Next thing you know, Johnny comes out with a goddamn brain hemorrhaging. Yep. That's why they had a killer. Right. So this is what's going on. We need to be smarter and we need to be able to go and look in our uh, blood lineage and find out who we are connected to these people that's on these black invention lists and begin to start suing these crackers for our monies. That's how you're going to get reparation. The United States government is going to give you no damn reparation. That's against the Constitution. But you should sue the corporations that participated and in, in, um, succeeded off of our blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, it, 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 it. Okay. All right. Um, that's the end of class for today. Um, anybody have anything they wanted to say or any questions? Da da Yes. Yeah, Lane. Uh, oh, what? Uh, what? So, would Temple and Saint Pete kind of be all of like connected? Or Florida? Would Tampa and St. Petersburg, Florida be connected? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Mhm. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah. Um. Uh -huh. The United States is a corporation, right? You see. We can't sue them because we de facto just like they are. And if they we get our nationality, then we're able to do, do, do what we need to do. Right, exactly. Right, first thing is first, nationality. That's right. And then DNA, bloodline, ties us to these particular family lines in which that shows that we are heirs and which that demonstrates that we have a right to this lawsuit and going forth. Because, I mean, we should be tired by now of people thieving from us. We should be tired now of people taking from us and not compensating us for our labor. Theft of our intellectual designs and intellectual um, properties. We should be tired of this. Yeah. Been tired of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. so you so how long? Yeah. So this is the reason why I brought the science of DNA to um, to us, um, because of the fact is that we have this way to go now, and understanding that our ancestry taps into the people who actually designed the United States, and who um, invented. Because remember, they were saying that all oh, these inventions came from uh, extraterrestrials. You right, us. <laughs> Even be one A. You're right from us. However, uh, we're here. We didn't go back into outer space. We're right here. <laughs> and because we're right here, we want to benefit off of our inventions, not you. Yeah. So we need some good lawyers like, um, like um, Sophia Stewart. And since being that she's a steward, she probably could have, um, she could probably sue for the mops on behalf of Thomas Stewart. I have stewards in my family. Mm -hmm. 
So this is why we need to definitely check these things out. All right. I'm going to say hi to Washington East, everyone. Hey, how are you, Washington East? Yeah, I'll tell you what's going on. I'll watch the car. 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 I'll uh, uh, these flags, uh, uh, the uh, you see all the Moorish flags, and we do have. I can get um, a brother to make um, us um, um, some flags, the little small flags for the um, Empire Washington. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Uh, yeah. I can go on the site and, and uh, get a Moorish flag. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, guys. Peace.